Joining the show is Odyssey NFL insider Jason Locke and Fora. Insider calls are presented by BetQL. Get access to data and insights the sports books don't want you to see. Bet smarter and beat the books. Download the BetQL app or visit BetQL.com today. You can also hear Jason with Brian Baldinger on Baldy's Breakdowns with new episodes out every week. Just search Baldy on the Odyssey app or wherever you find your podcast. Jason, thanks for the time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So OBJ is uh, officially a free agent, really, for the first time in his career. Um, Do you think this decision is going to come quickly, or do you think he's going to be measured and calculated about this? Well, look, he he, um, and his agent have been preparing for this for quite some time, not knowing whether it would happen, you know, via trade or whatever. But they've been talking about other scenarios and, you know, where he'd like to be and what quarterbacks make sense, what schemes make sense, uh, you know, where where the timeshare – in terms of being able to get the ball might be different than other places. So, like, I don't think it's happening overnight, but I don't think this is a, uh, you know, a two-week odyssey either. I don't think he's going to have to visit a bunch of places or whatever. Um, I think the money is going to be fairly even for the most part. Some teams might need to do voidable years and play some games in terms of the salary cap, but in terms of his take-home pay for the rest of the year, I mean, I think the baseline is $3 million, right? He wants to get back – to the 7.25 he would have made um, under his old deal for the rest of this year, and maybe some incentives to make more. Um, And honestly, guys, I think it's a lot like college. I think he's ready to be wined and dined, and well, well, not literally, but, you know, he's ready to have people make their pitch. He's ready to see, is Russell Wilson calling me? You know what I mean? Is... You know, is Kyle Shanahan calling me? Is is you know, are Sean Payton and Alvin Kamara calling me? Are you know, who who's kind of laying out a scenario to where I feel like it's it's most beneficial to go spend the next um, you know, couple of months of my career and right. and maybe longer. Now, uh, Jason, that's what I was going to ask you because you can look at uh, okay, uh, uh, you're a rent player, a, mm. hi- a highly uh, you know, a rented player considering the circumstance for this season. Does this come into play that whether it's like, you know, Seattle, Green Bay, you just throw all teams out there, or even look at the Saints. Does that come into play that maybe not necessarily wanting to hit the free agent market, if I like where I'm going, then not only this season, but have a long-term contract in place right now? I don't see them going that route. I, I, I think now there's always – look – you've always got the franchise tag. And if a guy goes somewhere for three right. months and it goes great, you're going to have some inherent advantages over other places where he doesn't know the coach. He doesn't know the scheme. You know what I mean? Maybe the pieces don't fit as well. So I, I don't, um, I don't anticipate this being more than a, a pure rental, but could it be a rent to own eventually? You know, if it goes well, I don't think that's out of the question because um this like he doesn't want to be a bounce around guy, and he's you know what I mean. He's become that he's now, and that. right, yeah. He, but I mean, this one is sort of an interim basis. But I think you know the next, the next one, the next real contract, I think has to be or should be the forever home, right? And I, that's what he's looking for. And the the temporary home could turn into the forever home. Uh, when you look at Odell catching in one hand. And doing all that, uh, I play with Andre Bad Moon Rising, mm-hmm. so I so I know what a diva receiver is. So no one can challenge me on that. But but, <laughs> but, but 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 the point being, I mean, I threw him 15 touchdown passes in 1993. That's that's not an opinion. That right. I, that that's actually that what happened. what occurred. But the point I, that, that I want to bring up, you know, his dad saying, "Well, look, uh, Baker Mayfield didn't throw me the ball here, didn't throw me the ball there." But then if you look in the back end of his Giants career and with the Browns, you can make an 11-minute film of all the drops. Sure. And then all of a sudden, I'm just looking what happened in the Saints and the Falcons. They had five or six drops in the first half. They killed the drives. So I'm looking at, was it just like a disinterested, lack of concentration, however you describe it. But but yeah. it's not like Odell uh, Beckham has been unbelievable as no. a true number one. Is that no, the second coming of Jerry Rice? I concur with everything you said. Um, I don't know exactly where he is. You know, like I don't know how close he is anymore to the guy who Eli Manning might want to target twenty three times today because he might win on seventeen of them. Right. And or is he the guy who became a spare part in 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 a Cleveland offense that let's face it, the reason he's there. Isn't Baker May- like it isn't Kevin Stefanski and 
two starting caliber running backs, and we're in 12 and 13 personnel all the time. The reason he's there is John Dorsey, when he was the GM, decided right. he wanted Freddie Kitchens to be the head coach, and Freddie Kitchens is Bruce Arians' guy, and it's no risk it, no biscuit, and it's two and three verts all the time. Great point. And they point. didn't have enough guys they thought could get vertical. vertical. Yep. That's why they made the trade. And now a new regime comes in, and it's the complete opposite. High percentage passes, right. we want boots. We don't care if it cuts off half the side of the field. Give him short, medium, a little bit deep. Let him pick from that or let him throw it away. Right? Don't mess it up for the, def- don't mess it up for the run game. Um, don't make this defense do any more than it could. Now, the defense is better now than it was the last two years. But, you know, still, that's, that's who they are. And his opportunities to shine were limited, and he did not take, make the most of it. And, and this had been snowballing in a negative way for a while. And it's probably a little bit of addition for subtraction for them. And for the new team, I, I, what, are, what are you getting? I, I, don't, I don't know that we absolutely positively know. That brings me back to why I right. think this will be a rent situation because, you know, there's going to be a lot of questions to be answered all around. I don't think he's a bad person at all. I think he truly wants to win. I know he works out and maintains himself like an animal, and I know it kills him that he's had to miss as much time as he has because of injuries. I think his heart is in the right place. Does it always come out the right way? No, um, it doesn't. But I think he's still an effective NFL receiver. Yes, uh, well, without a doubt. The, the talent is there. But, Jason, you know, we follow uh, being, you know, uh, we the flagship station for the LSU Tigers and mm-hmm. New Orleans Saints. But when you look at a pro career as far as consistency, he's not better than Jarvis Landry. Now, I know Jarvis Landry got highlighted maybe a couple of drops. But, but, but that is not nothing that usually occurs. Uh, would you agree with that, that if you look at consistency as far as career, uh, when you say Jarvis Landry's been more consistent than Odell Beckham, they're both LSU yeah. Tigers? I, I mean, the, what does Bill Parcell say the 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 best ability is availability, okay. and I know Jarvis got nicked up this year and missed about a month. But, but overall, <laughs> yes, he's been more consistent. He's it's not as spectacular. The highs aren't as right. high, the lows aren't as low. Um, it's working the slot. It's high, you know. It's it's high traffic areas. It's paying the price and moving the chains. Uh, it's not the highlight plays. It's not glamorous. It's not down the sidelines, tippy toe, toe drag, swag, that stuff. Um, it's a lot of the dirty work, but. No, Jarvis Lange is a hell of a football player. When they gave him whatever it was, $15, $16 million in free agency to leave Miami and put him in the slot, you know, I was kind of like, man, that's a lot for a slot receiver. I'm at the point now where a receiver is a receiver, man. And if you can do what he does and you're good for 100 catches a year and and, and win it on third down, then, yeah, pay him like he's an outside receiver. I get it. Jason, one of the things in in talking to people in the league and scouts also is, and we're already starting to see a little bit of this trend, that um, this year was unusual that you had two first-round pick running backs. But I I think because you're getting smaller on the defensive side of the football, nickel, dime sets, I think all these offensive coaches saying, wait a minute, man, we got to run the ball more. I think now that's going to be a greater emphasis on on selecting running backs and say from the middle of round two to the end of round four, and I accumulate those running backs. High collision players, you're going to. 